But forget about have we developed good players. The point is, are we now at the point where we're developing players as good already as other places? I do want to bring this up because uh, I saw this on uh, MLSsoccer.com. It said, uh, we cracked the code. How MLS player development is meeting the world's best. So MLSsoccer.com does this every once in a while. They're Mm -hmm. like, hey, here's here's some branded content. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah, we're not going to tell you some branded content. But I do think Fred Lipka, Vice President of Player Youth and Development, explained on MLS Today show why today's youth players from the United States and Canada are at a different level than before. So he said, before, we were very much the same kind of player. We were very physical, running, very hard worker, very dedicated to the game, but not really technical and not really a fast thinker. Now we're a large spectrum of players that can be physical, always dedicated to the game, good culture of effort. But now we have players that can we can find in Europe and we can find in Argentina and we can find in Brazil. I would say almost the same level of talent. Right. And he said, talent soccer, talent is soccer IQ, the capacity to understand and receive the cues of the game, to understand, to process information and to then execute. People almost always see the execution piece, but don't see what happens before. So now we have kids that don't play with one key. They can anticipate because they know what to look at, what tempos they have to use. Sometimes you have uh, to use one additional touch to attract the player to create space. Today, we have kids that do that. Maybe it wasn't so the case seven or eight years ago. We did a lot of progress, and our coaches and academies did a lot of the progress to teach the game the right way. Is it a little too soon? To or be good, is to it be the good right, at soccer? Well. Or is it the right <laughs> time? Because someone said in the chat before, are we in the golden age of, of goalkeepers? Dude, is it the right time to sit here and go, hey, we basically got the same talent level <laughs> as Brazil and all these other places. Is it feel, does it feel that way? Because I kind of think that's not that braggadocious. I think Caleb Porter would like what this guy's <laughs> doing. But I think it's pretty in line with what's actually happening. I do think the American player, especially at a youth level, is kind of now, it feels like the Weston McKennies, the Christian Pulisic's, the uh, um, Tyler Adams, felt like the turn of the corner. But now Brendan Aronson... Now we've got these younger players where you're like, yo, maybe we are that good. I think the um, the way I sort of um, see it, and even since we've been doing this show, the if, if the bar is how many Americans are playing in Europe, I'm getting minutes, I'm playing well. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's not that. Maybe it's not just playing. Mm-hmm. Well, let me let me let me let you finish your statement. Right. So I'm just saying that that the, the the progress is clearly there in the fact that we have very. I mean, we we're just talking about Slonina and and the fact that we have young players um, that are getting just respect on the global scale. You know, when when Draw Cancelo was like the the player I hate marking the most is Christian Pulisic. That's that says a lot about his his right. development. These are all like accomplishments that we we take. Little things that, but even just but, simply saying that. But forget about have we developed good players. The point is, are we now at the point where we're developing players as good already as other places? Not just look. Now we're getting minutes in Europe. Are we? Did we? Are we looking at? Are we not looking ten years in ten years from now? Think about where we were ten years ago. Think about where we were five years ago with the players that we had. Mm-hmm. Right, Christian Pulisic was like the only one that was really giving us any hope for the future, and there were other players that were starting to make that move. Now we've got a bunch of players playing in Europe. Sure, but yo, what about these younger kids? What about these these fourteen, fifteen year olds? Are we at that point now where we're like, yo, we just as bad as y'all? Um, and in, in this. In this version, Alexis means bad means good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, (laughs) so just so yeah, (laughs) just so you know, Um, I think there's there's things to be proud of, and and I think there's uh, I wouldn't go that far, but so okay, on a scale of one to ten, ten being our youth players are absolutely no different than your Netherlands, than your Brazil, than than your Argentina. So my answer, even before I give you a rating, I would just simply say, I think we produce the 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 same i would say we we can produce the same quality players, but we can't produce as many that that's where that's where I see the difference. I, I think uh, the Netherlands, uh, uh, France, they can. They so you think their median player is better than our median player? Correct. If we look at our peaks, we both got the same peaks. Right, right. They've just got. They a, just a, have so many more 
better uh, uh, players. Their average player is better than our average player, but our bests are the same. I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. No, so. that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm okay. not saying that. You're saying that. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that. I'm saying we're better than anybody I, I else. I agree that you said the thing I said correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> shut it down. We're good. We're, <laughs> boom, we just shut everything up. Uh, a, a nice cold Bruce said, our 12 to 14 year olds are not comparable to big nations, to be honest. Cool. I want to know why you know that. Uh, what are you? What are you doing, bro? What are you googling? Um, uh, but we see, we see these uh, the youth World Cups and and the U twenties and 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 U eighteens. So I would, body I don't, I wouldn't well, we've say been for a minute, and that doesn't always translate. And it's because of what a nice cold brew said after that. I don't. He think, said we fall behind in development, fifteen to eighteen. But but is that over? But is uh, that gap? Um, Remember we, when this was the most important conversation in all of American soccer? <laughs> was just like, who are we developing next? That gap is not. As large and as as far as when you, especially when you watch these uh, these youth tournaments, the U.S. Uh, the when the one that um, uh, Timothy Weah was in the U twenties a couple mm-hmm. years ago. I mean, like they got pretty far. They they believe they lost to France, if I'm not mistaken. Right. But they, they were competitive in that match. But you see, there it clearly is a but gap. Those, those players, while playing well at that age, don't always develop into great pros. Some of those players fall through the cracks. More of our players fall through those cracks than before. But that's talking about what happened last time. Timothy Way is now a full-blown professional. Right. Those players are all in their 20s. What about them, them youth players? Are we really now at that point, or is this just a, hey, we're a selling league, so we need to promote ourselves this way? Um, I would say it's a little bit of both, but we've, we've spoken to enough people uh, you know, one a name that comes to mind is somebody like Aleko Eskandarian, who's working this with his job with MLS Next and, and involved in, in in just Concacaf and and kind of uh, just growing the game and teaching uh, coaching at young levels. And it, it it's a it's a long process. It's a big country. A lot we, of steps to it. A lot of steps, but it, it's you you have to say just simply the fact that there are players. In just in the amount of time that we've been doing this show, the amount of players that have gone over to Europe and been to and the and I say the amount because it's uh, the amount of quality players. For if you look twenty years back, twenty fifteen yeah, when we started, we had yeah we had Clint Dempsey, we had uh, Brian McBride, you we had, had a couple you here had, and there, you had superstars that so, came out of nowhere right, in the right. U.S. Chirondolo and Jer- yeah, they yeah. were there, they were around, you know. But it, it it's it's now Americans are. Uh, sought after but they're also like well think about it when Landon Donovan our best player went to Everton people were like wow he's actually good right right and now you've got teams chanting Brendan Aronson's name when he's not even there exactly so there's, so there's obviously been a shift I'm wondering if what what is what do the guy what do the chat think or if you're listening to this as a podcast episode let us know what you think tweet at us uh do you think we're there do you think we've hit that point because I'd love to believe we are what I do believe is that the league is focused on becoming a selling league and developing youth players. And if that's their goal, we're going to be developing a lot of great players. Yeah. So if that is that the incentive that we need? Because there's a whole bunch of fucking money at the end of the... Well, okay. And <laughs> like, here's another fine. question. Here's another question. And this is a little inflammatory. Okay. Caleb's going to love this question. Uh, if everyone complains because promotion and relegation, if that existed then every city would have multiple clubs mm-hmm. and they'd be, in te- they'd be incentivized to go out and develop youth players, to build those players, to develop them for their senior squad or to sell them so that they have money to continue playing the way it happens in Europe. But if this change happens, if this MLS Next program and these things create a system by which we develop players that are as good and become sort of a football factory, if you will, as a nation, then in a way... Is that not good enough? Then did MLS not come good? <laughs> Just like that lady before the party. <laughs> I think you mean come well. No, no, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> did MLS come low? Uh, no, did MLS come good? Um, the uh, Look, yeah, I, I think the, the thing that you can provide, uh, uh, you know, I think the best thing that you can provide to a, a, the younger generation is a pathway to success. I think as, if you want the sport to grow, young people need to see uh, examples of, of successful uh, uh, pathways for themselves that they, they are in people that they can admire I think it can it can shape uh, uh, communities it's like when when somebody from from the hood uh, you know makes it to the MBA or makes it or is really successful in college or whatever right. everybody you know New York is a weird example because it's like you, you, somebody could be wildly famous on one block and then the next block nobody knows <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> who's the dude nah you ain't gonna discount at this bodega nah you 
you gotta go to the other one, man. <laughs> but there's they, there's things uh, like that where um, you know if you're in a, a small town in, in anywhere in the world and somebody makes it out and and gets a, to play for uh, a, a professional team, the whole community it, it can can gather support just for that that club. Right. And, and like it also that. inspires the next generation. So I think if however that happens, whether there's a uh, there's a, a, a pot of gold at the end and there's incentive to do that from uh, MLS. Um, I think that is the the overall effect that you want. You want people uh, to be excited about the club in in the in, in your city. Uh, Bay Area Guna says shit gets deep when Alexis uses his Brian Gumble voice. <laughs> I didn't know I had one. That's great. Uh, Americans do have a general high ceiling with a low cost compared to what you'd expect playing for a South American or paying for a South American Mexican player. Yeah, there is still that America discount. Right. That people pay uh, because they are football. Um, so uh, says Pro and Rel, Pele Trigger, hilarious. <laughs> no, no number 10 or number nine striker is the hardest position to create, and the U.S. still lack this. That's a great point. Yeah. We aren't building the Lewandowskis. We aren't building the Wesley Snyders, even though he looks like me now. <laughs> We're not building the Raquel May, which is, you know, a name that I brought up before yeah. as a joke. Um, we aren't building those players that are like creative geniuses. And I think the majority is because that's built outside of an academy. Yeah. You gotta, that's that, built that's, on the that's street. That's on the street. Yeah, bro. Uh, you know, football. Also, players, man, MLS players or just American soccer players in general, we ain't swaggy enough, bro. We're getting there. Little by well, little. We ain't, you ain't going to inspire the youth. Unless you swaggy as hell. We got to be wearing heat at all times. Best sneaker collection is a dude named Jim Curtin. <laughs> he got it. Did you see the Instagram account? Jim Curtin sneakers? Yes, you brought this up last week. It's great. They put their first post up. <laughs> okay, everybody go follow. I don't know who they are. People think it's me. It's not me. I don't have that much time to dedicate <laughs> okay. to it. 